So, hello. I'm here in Parliament Square. It is um, coming up to f half past four. It's my camera work getting any better. I don't think it is. It's coming up to half past four. I'm just walking past the Supreme Court. A quite nice building, if you like legalese. I'm going to have to get across the uh, the road in a moment. I thought I'd just show you what's going on down here in uh, in Parliament Square, St Margaret's Church. There's some coppers. There's a lot of them round here, as you will start to see. There is a massive Uber security operation going on in central London as we speak. Of course, yesterday. In, Cent in uh, Boston, that thing happened. We're not quite sure what happened. There's a lot of people saying, of course, that this is a false flag. Whether it actually was or not, it remains to be seen. I mean, it's a bit odd, isn't it? A it just falls perfectly into the whole regime of the war on terror. A terror plot, a bombing, on Patriots Day, it's almost as if somebody hates our freedoms. Whereas I'm not quite sure if that is actually how a radical Muslim mind actually works. I think possibly a radical Muslim mind works like this. Hurt the corporations. Now you may have seen the news that the stock market, especially in the American stock market, um, has been hit by what happened in Boston, but there's a few things, isn't there? There's the whole prospect... Cheers, guys. There's some police getting out of my way, looking at my camera suspiciously. What is this guy doing? He's got headphones on. He's in Parliament Square. What could he possibly want? What I want is to cut through all of these tourists so that I can actually get this done. I have to be back at work in 50 minutes. So, the House of Parliament. There's lots of, uh, lots of strange goings on. There was a protest down here earlier on, of course, uh, Parliament Square over there is the traditional place for political protest, but since 2005 it has been designated a SOCPA zone, which is the Serious Organised Crime and Policing Act, and essentially that means if you want to protest there, you have to get permission from the powers that be. They have to agree that it's a good idea that you have a protest. And we saw one earlier on, it. Uh, I think it was the Sikhs who have been protesting in London for the last I don't know how long it's been, five days in a row? The Sikhs have been out and about causing uh, causing a bit of a hold-ups, causing a bit of extra security, a, bit of, a few more bobbies on the beat. Of course, it's around these roads, uh, down the embankment, essentially, where the London Marathon is going to be taking place. And, of course, they've announced today that uh, both for the London Marathon and for the funeral tomorrow, which is going to be starting from just this part of the building over here. They are expanding the uh, security zones. There's lots of police down here. I'm, about, I'm just going over here just to show you the amount of press that are here. Of course, um, I'm going to be going down tomorrow morning to see the wedding, but uh, the wedding, I keep saying that today, the wedding, such a happy of event, uh, the funeral. These guys in these like little tents. These guys, of course, are going to be keeping an eye on the beginning of the funeral. I am probably going to go towards the end. I've been checking out the security out at uh, St. Paul's, all this stuff, up at St. Paul's, and um, it seems that you can't really get very close to it, so I'm going to give that a go. Probably going to go somewhere on Fleet Street or something like that, if I can give it a go. I think that's probably where most people are going to be hanging out, although there's a lot of tension around this, uh, attention, tension, around this area. I think most people who have an interest in a more 
sort of eclectic view of what's going on. I think they're probably going to be hanging around St Paul's Cathedral. That's what I think. Now, let me just try and uh, talk about this Boston thing. The problem that I perceive is that nobody has yet taken responsibility for what happened. Now, this is sort of problematic because I get the horrible feeling that this is going to be a much more longer ranging set of events. I mean, the, the, the press have basically people in the palm of their hands and um, you have to ask yourself, you know, if you work for the Tavistock Institute, you could ask yourself this question, what are the public ready to perceive? And what the public are ready to perceive is a nutcase, radical, right-wing, white person, a little bit like this police officer who got burnt alive in his, his little hut. Somebody like that, ranging a much longer uh, escapades that will be talked about in the press, uh, a long-ranging set of events which have indiscriminate, indiscriminate killing of innocent people, all blamed on those who are essentially have feelings that are anti-state. That is what I perceive is going on here.